Hey everybody, this is Carrie with Mountain Mermaid Wellness and I'm going to walk you through a practice today, a yoga practice um, to support your liver and your gallbladder. Uh, we are in the, the season of spring, which for those of us who live in mountain climates is always really exciting and it's kind of a, a dance of still being in late winter, early spring, and it can still snow at any moment, but then the sun comes out and the grass is turning green and a lot of the snow has melted. And um, in this season of spring, from the Chinese medicine perspective, we are in um, the element of wood. And um, from an Ayurvedic perspective, we are in the season of kapha, K-A-P-H-A, which represents water and the earth element and it's a time of cleansing and clearing and um, I think it's amazing that all of the things that have been going on in our world and with the COVID-19 virus and all that we um, have been asked or guided or told to do about the best thing for us to be staying home or grounding in or you know having to pause a lot of the activities that we've been doing or maybe even our business or all these shifts that have been going on that i know have been um really amazing and such a gift for um so many people as well as brought new challenges um, which always cause us to have to be creative, to think about new ways to solve problems, issues, um, to readjust, to adapt. And at our core, we are resilient and we are adaptable as humans. And so there is a, you can see people just really rising up to this occasion. And um, as much as it has its obvious challenges, um, it has been, an opportunity for us to turn inward and to go back and to revisit and to look at our own health and well being and how can we keep ourselves strong, our immune systems strong, our nervous systems balanced and grounded so that we can be of greater service to our family and our community and those we serve. But we can't flip it we can't just go into service and forget about ourselves and our well-being if if we are not um, in that balance uh, we suffer and our bodies do um, self-care is really not negotiable right now it is a great opportunity to really get to know yourself and to love yourself and to get to know your body and to take care of yourself again so that you can be of greater help to those around you, those you're taking care of or serving. So my intention for making these videos is to be able to bring um, these practices that are powerful and transforming and so supportive during all of our lives, not even just this time. So um, those of you who can't join me in my online classes during the week uh, with your schedules can still feel like um, you're getting what you need to be nourished and fed. So this practice of supporting the wood element of ourselves um, really looks at how we support our liver, which is the sanitation system of our body and has an incredible capacity to renew itself when it's been, um, it's like 70% if it's been damaged, it can actually is the organ of the body that can renew itself um, back into balance. And you know, as we shift from the winter and we've, um, we accumulate, we accumulate ama toxins from our Vedic perspective. We maybe accumulate excess weight or just we, we're resting and we're more inward. And then we've gone through this time where we've been still forced kind of to be inward, right? Um, but the spring season brings about the moving of the water down to the earth and water goes down. It has to go to like the deepest part and the liver asks to be cleansed regularly. It wants to be free so it can do its job of cleaning our blood and making hormones and um, 
clearing the body of anything that it doesn't need and isn't serving it, including viruses and bacteria. So the springtime is such a potent time to be nourishing our livers and the gallbladder is like it's you know second in command um, they work together the gallbladder uh, digests the fats in our body our brain is composed it's encompassed in fat our organs are encompassed in fat we need fat in our bodies it keeps us alive healthy fats and so we have to be able to break those down because they are hard to break down so the gallbladder that's its duty is to create bile to break down those fats so to support them and we're going to do a practice um, to help that and the emotion i want to bring up, bring up that is associated with our liver is the emotion of anger and our ability to feel our anger as a raw human emotion that we all have, and that isn't this wrong or bad thing to feel, but how when we feel that anger, what do we do with it? For a lot of us, we were taught to stuff it and be quiet, and then it gets stuck in our organs and our energy field, and then we might blow up for no reason at all. It's someone who cuts us off in traffic or whatever. Um, but instead, we are learning that this power of anger, it's a powerful emotion. And so it needs to be channeled or if it gets stuck in the body, it causes imbalance. If we have liver gallbladder imbalances, we have inflammation in our body, uh, we have fatigue, we, all, we have a whole host of issues that are related to um, a liver imbalance. So we want to channel our anger and we wanna channel it into assertive action, into setting a healthy boundary, into a way that we can speak our truth and also be able to listen. So it's not about speaking or just vomiting our anger, but we actually want to speak our truth, but from a place that um, isn't hurting ourselves because anger ultimately hurts us the most even if we do throw it on to someone else it hurts us and it hurts others but ultimately it's it's like um it's like venom and so we're going to actually do a practice called expelling the venom where we need to move it and channel it in a a more constructive way so again it's not hurting us it's not hurting others and we're, we aren't getting so triggered by things that just don't matter. And so if you are experiencing a lot of anger right now because there, um, you, anger can come through when we're feeling helpless or powerless or we have no choice or we can't change something that's going on. And so there's a lot of that right now. There's a lot that we don't have control over. We, maybe we don't feel like we can change but we can change how we respond. We can always choose to do something that is going to bring more light and impact the world simply by us learning how to channel our anger and how to work with it in, a, in that more positive way. Um, so that's what we're gonna do in our practice. So we're gonna begin seated. So if you wanna take a comfortable seated position on a blanket, folded blanket, or a bolster, or a pillow. For this practice, um, if you have blocks, great. And if you don't have them, it's okay. You don't absolutely need them. Um, so let's begin. We're just gonna begin practicing a pranayama, which just means a breathing exercise um, called samavritti. And it's a, it's a breath work practice to balance our nervous system. So I'm just going to allow you to begin or encourage you to just allow your breath to begin to move in and out of your belly. Feeling your breath move into all sides of the bowl of your belly. 
so that you feel your breath move into your low back. And then the samavritti pranayama is essentially just allowing your inhalation and your exhalation to be equal in its length. Not by controlling it or, or forcing it to do that, but it's more of a yielding. So if you let yourself just lean back a little bit in your seat, and you feel that sense of your spine supporting you. And you allow just your muscles to begin to relax over your bones without collapsing, still keeping a long spine. Eventually your breath will begin to regulate into that equanimity of the inhale and the exhale. Feeling your breath as it fills you up on your inhale. And feeling your breath as it empties out on your exhale. Three more rounds of your breath. Allowing the equalization of your in-breath to your out-breath. And then you can return to your natural breath when you're complete. And then let's slowly, go ahead and slowly open your eyes. All right, so we're going to come to standing. And I've been teaching a lot of this energy medicine yoga to connect us more to the energy meridians of our body that really run the health of our organs. And so we're going to begin with the wake up. So you're gonna take your two piece fingers on each hand, find your collarbones, and then find your sternum bone right at the center of your chest. You're just gonna go right outside the sternum, down a couple inches from your collarbone, and you're going to tap here, inhaling through your nose, and out through your mouth or nose, whichever comes most easeful. We're going to tap here in our kidney 27 meridians. This is an opportunity to really strengthen our immune system, to get all of our energy centers waking up, talking to each other, moving any stuck energy. Good. One more cycle of your breath. And then let's place one hand, two piece fingers right at the top of the sternum bone. And we're gonna tap here, right on our thymus gland, supporting the production of T cells to strengthen our immune system and to stop any cold or flu in its tracks. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. So when we do this little practice at the beginning to get the energy centers moving, it really helps us in our asanas just to get energy flowing when we move through our postures of practice. So let's take one more cycle of our breath, strong immune systems we are creating and sustaining. Good, all right. Now come right to the sides of your ribs, below the breast, 
to the sides and then kind of round slightly forward. You're just going to tap around here on your spleen meridian point, which actually have a direct connection to your liver. And if you find at any time any points that are sore, I want you to give more attention to those. You know, press more, stay there, breathe. One more cycle of your breath. Good. And then just shake out your hands toward the earth. Now bring your two peace fingers onto your cheekbones and you're gonna lightly tap here in your stomach meridians. Three cycles of your breath here, just tapping all around. Check it out. Now we're going to march in place, tapping our same hand on the same side thigh, still breathing in through our nose and out through our mouth. And if that's not comfortable, you can breathe out through your nose. All right, let's come to a pause, shake up our hands, shake them to the earth, and then without stopping to think too much, take your opposite hand to your opposite thigh. both sides of your brain, talking to both sides of your body, getting the energy systems to wake up, opening a program for healing. And one more cycle of your breath, and then you can come on down, shake it off. Now place your hands right either on your pubic bone or a couple inches out in front, and we're gonna sweep up the front of our body on an inhale. And on the exhale, we're going to release down and come right back to our pubic bone again. Inhaling, sweep up. Exhaling, release. So we can bring affirmations into this pull up, this practice that's clearing our auric field. And the affirmations that we can use I am safe to speak my truth. I am safe to speak my truth. Or I am safe and I am healthy. Whatever resonates for you, let's do a couple more. And then place one finger on your third eye, right between your eyebrows, one finger in your navel, and you're going to press in and up in these two surfaces. Three deep breaths. Come on out, shake it out. All right, let's bring our arms up over our head now. We're going to take a hold of our, I'm gonna do my best to mirror you. So you're gonna take hold of your left wrist overhead. You're gonna inhale, ground through your feet, stretch up through your spine. And then as you exhale, you'll side bend to your right and let your hips draw to the left. Grounding through the feet, stretching through the wrist. Oh, deep side body opening. Good. And then inhale, rise up, switch wrists. Exhale, side bend to the other side. Hips draw over to your right. <clears throat> and then inhale, rise up. Exhale, let your arms come down to your sides. Pause in mountain pose. And now we're going to take our thumbs and um, we'll bring our, our fingers pressing together and take our thumbs right on either edge of the bridge of our nose, right to this occiput, occipital bone of your eyes. You're right in that corner here where our bladder meridian runs. And you're going to add some pressure here as you lift up. So you're gonna pull, pull up, you can press into those points. 
And then you're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna bow and release your spine and head towards the earth while still applying pressure to the bladder point. Deep breath. And then you're gonna slowly come up into chair pose so that your weight is in your heels, knees are directly over your ankles. Draw your tailbone under and then lift up through your chest and continue to lift your thumbs up into these points. Three breaths here. Good, and inhale, slowly straighten your legs, release the thumbs and then let your arms come up overhead and you're going to cross your arms in front of you, waving your arms, bend your knees, come back into this hanging or standing child's pose, letting your head and spine release, but letting your knees bend. So this is a lot more about your spine. When we come into this relationship of a wood element within our body and really looking at our spine, as well as the organ sliver gallbladder, and in our practice supporting the mobility and the strength of our spine. Now to come up, you're going to place your hands on your big toes and you're going to sweep up to your inner ankle. And as you slowly rise up, you're going to sweep up the inside line of your shins, your inner knees, inner thighs, up the front of your body, past your armpits, come back to these spleen points and you're going to vigorously rub these points. You don't need to know exactly where that little point is. You'll rub all around and you will get it. Good. Breathe in and breathe out. Good, shake it off. We're gonna come back into our chair pose this time and we're gonna place our hands on our low back. Our kidneys are and you can kind of put one hand over the other and as you bend your knees stick your bum back weight is in your heels see for what we're going to do we'll just keep our feet hip distance apart and then draw your tailbone under draw your pubic bone to your navel navel to your spine so you're getting this lift of your spine and now you're going to massage one direction in a circle your low back Good. Just keep going, breathing, circling here. And then slowly rise up to mountain pose. And then you're going to bring your hands forward. Just kind of flip them over and back a few times and then just shake it out. Okay, so now we're going to step into a wide stance and come into a horse stance. So you're going to want to let your knees bend to a comfortable place for you so that your knees are stacked over your ankles. Your feet are at a diagonal, your knees are pointing that direction as well. And with your hands on your thighs, you're going to lean forward, really pressing into the earth with your feet. And you're going to dip your right shoulder forward and then look over your left shoulder. And here you're going to thump your heels so you can do it together or you can do one at a time as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, one more time. Good, come back to center. And then let's drop the left shoulder, look over our right shoulder. And again, thumping both heels up and down or one at a time, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Inhaling. And exhaling, one more time. Good. Come back to center and then let's again do five more. You can do one at a time foot or together. Those heel thumps, let it out. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Okay, good. Slowly come on up and then slowly straighten your legs. A little shake. 
And then we're going to go back into the horse stance and we're going to use a lion's breath now, which is a way of really like opening up all the blood vessels in your face and your muscles and, and then releasing excess energy out through the mouth through the lion's breath. So if you've never done it before, I'll show you. So again, you'll bend your knees, hands on your thighs, you'll inhale deeply and on your exhale, you'll stick out your tongue and cross your eyes. Inhale. Three more times. Inhale. Just releasing that energy. You might giggle, but it's okay. It's funny. <clears throat> and then you can slowly come on up. <coughs> All right, go ahead and turn your feet in and come into mountain pose. All right, so we're going to do our next practice, expelling the venom that I mentioned earlier as a way to move anger out into your body and into the earth, allow you to be composted and transmuted into healthy boundaries, sort of action, gratitude, love. And so the way that we're going to do that is you're going to bend your knees and as if you were going to dig up this really deep root, you're going to inhale and you're pulling up that root and then you're going to bring it up on your inhale and you're going to exhale and throw it back into the earth. On your exhale, make a sh sound. And then you're going to do it again, inhaling, pulling up that root. Maybe you don't even know why you're angry, but you just feel anger in your body. You feel that irritability. You're just going to pull it and feel that rage. You're going to pull it up, pull that root up. Inhale, exhale. Send it back to the earth to be composted and transmuted. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. Inhale, pulling up any anger, rage. Maybe you know why you're angry. Pulling that up, inhaling, exhale, shh. Bend your knees enough so your hands are connecting to your mat as if you were connecting your hands to the earth. And I just want you to take a couple breaths here and just let the energy of your anger be transmuted. And then begin to feel the energy rise up into your hands of gratitude love, healthy boundaries. And you're going to pull up now these seeds into your hands. You're going to slowly rise up. You're going to throw these love gratitude seeds out Shh, and let them fall to the earth. Let's do that one more time. Come on over. Let's pull up any roots. Breathe in. Exhale, shh, release into the earth and let your hands touch here and just let this energy be transmuted, transformed. And then let it transform into love and gratitude and what you want to plant, where you want to channel your energy. And you grab those seeds and then just shh. Earth. And place your hands over your heart. Step into mountain pose. Good. Okay, so we're going to move now into tree pose. And so you can go ahead and stay in your mountain pose and let's balance, I'll mirror you, so balance, um, you'll balance on your left leg and you're going to open up your right hip. And you're gonna find something out in front of you that you can fix your eyes upon, activate that drishti focus out of your third eye, just allowing the body to focus on the mind. And then bring your hands to 
your spleen meridians on either side of your ribs. If you're giving yourself a hug, you're gonna hold here. And when you feel ready, you're going to bring your right foot to your inner shin. And if that's not useful, you could go even back to the floor and just do a little toe tap when you need to tap the floor. Otherwise, your foot comes to your inner shin or it comes above your knee to your inner thigh and you're breathing. Balancing as you ground your roots through the four corners of your left foot. Let your roots spread out like the water that's going down deep into the earth and spreading out into every nook and cranny. And then draw that energy up from the earth, up into your core. So you feel your navel move toward your spine and then your spine continues to extend out through the crown of your head. And then when you feel ready, you can walk it out. Come on out, shake out your arms. Again, bring your hands to the spleen points and the sides of your ribs. And then go ahead and plant your right foot on the earth, open your left hip, and then bring your foot to your inner shin or above your knee to your inner thigh, pressing the skin of your foot to your inner shin rounding through your foot, throw your roots down and then out. And then draw that earth energy up through your leg, through your spine, and then all the way up to the crown of your head. Breathing. on out when you're ready and shake out your arms and your legs. Okay, so now we're going to work in warrior one pose. So come and stand at the top of your mat and we are going to come back to this spleen hold here. If that's not, it's not, if that is not working for you, you can always bring your hands to your heart. We're going to step our right foot back um, so that your back foot has its own lane. You're not on a tight rope. And then your front knee will bend directly over your ankle. And your back foot turned out to a 30 degree angle. Then instead of bringing your right hip around and forward, I want you to draw that right rib around. So you're coming into that twist. So your torso, your chest is moving to the left. Bending into the front knee so it's over the ankle. And then breathing here as you Ground through your feet down. Spread your roots wide as your back thigh bone moves back. And then draw the earth energy up so that your feet isometrically draw together. You come into your core and the base of your pelvis and you feel that strength and that pulling up energy up now through the spine and out through the crown of your head. Breathing here. Then step forward and we'll switch sides. Left foot steps back into its own leg. Plant your foot down, let your foot turn out to the left. So it's 30 degree angle and then bend to the front knee. Drawing now the left side forward, bringing that twist to the belly. And then breathing into your spine so you feel your breath in your back supporting you so bring your back heel up step forward and then release so we're going to come back now into warrior one pose and transition from there into warrior three pose so we'll come back to our spleen hug. We'll step our right foot back, warrior one. Turn the back foot out. Bring your right side forward to your left. Breathe. 
option to stay here in warrior one with the spleen hug. And then option to shift your weight into your left leg. Let your left knee bend and then let it start to straighten as your back leg rises up parallel to the earth. Your back foot is flexed as if a wall is behind you and you're pressing it into the wall. And then reach out long through the crown of your head so your gaze is down at the earth. Breathe. Then slowly bend your front knee, come back into a warrior one pose, and then step forward and release and come into mountain pose. And then again, come back to the spleen hold, second side, left up steps back, warrior one. Option to stay here as you bring your ribs to the right. Or option to continue on to warrior three. You're gonna press down into your front leg, into your foot, straighten the leg slowly. Bring the back leg up, flex your foot, press out through your heel, and then lengthen out through the crown of your head. Roots growing down and deep. And then drawing the energy up through your supporting leg, up through your core. Feel the space in your vertebrae. And slowly bend your front knee and come back into warrior one. And then step forward and release into mountain pose. Inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. Exhale, bend your knees, come into this standing child pose, knees bent, spine, releasing towards the earth. Then you're going to make your way onto your knees and hands into all fours. And if you need to put padding under your knees, you can do that. We'll do a little cat cow pose here with your hands spread wide, that micro bend in your elbows, hips directly over your knees. And on your inhale, flex and round your spine into cat pose as you press the earth away. Exhaling and lengthening your spine into cow pose, drawing the mat toward you and move your heart forward. Inhale, draw your tailbone under, round each vertebrae, chin toward your chest. Exhaling and lengthening your spine. Cow pose and moving at your own pace with your breath. Really going into your body and feeling into the sensations when you move your spine in this way to open it and to help it be spacious. And how does this feel to you? And then let your cat cow move side to side in a crescent shape. and switch directions. Pause in a neutral spine. Separate your knees wide. Come on your toenails and draw your big toes together. Inhale, round your spine into cat pose. Exhale your hips back into child's pose and then stretch your arms out. Let your head rest on your mat or on a block or a pillow. And then inhale, slowly come on up. To make our way onto our backs. I want you to have a block or a folded blanket or a pillow available to you. And you're going to lie on your back 
with your knees bent and feet hip distance apart. Allow your shoulder blades to come flat on your upper back as they release into your mat. Feet hip distance apart and walked in toward you. Flowing bridge pose. Inhaling your arms up overhead. Press down into your feet and lift your hips up into bridge pose. And as you exhale, let your hips release back to the earth and let your arms come to your sides. Inhaling your arms up overhead, hips rise up into bridge pose. Exhaling your hips down, letting your arms come to your sides. Follow your own breath. Inhaling fully into arms overhead, hips rising. And then exhaling and letting your hips release. Arms come to your sides. The next time your hips rise up, let your arms come up overhead again. Back to your shoulders rooting down, feet rooting down, hips rising up into full bridge pose for five belly breaths. Really feeling the support of your spine, the muscles of your back body, your buttocks, your hamstrings, your low back muscles, all toning to open your front body, your chest, your lungs, to help your liver release toxins, to move and strengthen the energy of your liver, gallbladder. And then slowly lower one vertebrae at a time, your hips back to the earth. And then let your arms come to your sides. Find your prop that you can put under your hips. Lift your hips up and slide it right under your sacrum. Allow your arm bones to rotate out if they haven't been already. Your shoulder blades, again, really under your back, lifting your chest up. Option to stay here in supported bridge pose or to bring your legs up into an inversion so that your heels are stacked over your hips. And then you can keep your arms here at your sides or you can bring your hands behind your head and let your thumbs come right into that notch at the back of your head where your cervical spine meets your skull to these electric points is what they're referred to as. And your elbows are relaxed. Your head is relaxed into your hands as your thumbs are pressing into these points with a little bit of muscle energy. You could also choose to rest your legs against a wall so that this is more of a restorative posture and less um, muscle energy needed for your leg. Allow your hips to keep releasing into your prop. your jaw. Enjoy five more deep belly breaths. Can 
release your plank on your head. Slowly draw your knees in toward your chest. And then place one foot at a time onto your mat and lift your hips up and remove your block, relax your hips down. And then slowly roll to your side and then slowly bring yourself back up. We're going to do a little seated practice before we end in Shavasana. And when we talk about the wood element and this motion of anger, um, we're also talking about our ability to speak our truth. And in the chakra energy system of the body, we look at the throat chakra. And so we're, we're gonna do a little bit of just helping, helping to open the energy of our voices, speak our truth from love, love and boldness. Sometimes it's hard to say what we need to say, but we can do it from love instead of from anger. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your Adam's apple and you're gonna take one point your fingers on each hand and you're gonna, going to go under and above it. And you're just gonna smooth apart. And we're gonna go, we'll go to the left. So I'll mirror you and you're just gonna smooth up and then down to your jaw and down to the bottom of your neck and work your way all the way over to the side of your neck. And when you get done with that, you'll come back to your Adam's apple from the center. And we'll go to the other side. So you're smoothing up to the jaw, down to the collarbone. This feels good, just releasing all the sore spots in your neck muscles. We hold a lot there, don't we? All right, good. Then come back to center. Now you're going to make a figure eight so that the center of your figure eight is your Adam's apple. Breathing. You can do this with your hands. Good, and then just shake out your hand. And now you're going to place your hand on your throat. You can also place it outside here in your energy field. Either way, it still works. And you're going to go in a counterclockwise circle. So if this is 12 o'clock and this is 6 o'clock, you're going to go counterclockwise first to your left. And here we're releasing any excess energy in the energy of our throat, our ability to express ourselves, to listen as well. Just as important as us speaking our truth is to listening to others' truth. You're just releasing energy, breathing. Your hand can be going as slow as it feels inspired to. It could be going fast, just trusting your, your body's intuition. Good, and you can pause, shake out your hand and you can use the same hand or switch hands. And now we're going to go clockwise to seal in, to seal in balanced energy. So again, this is 12, this is six. So we go to the right, breathing. Another full round of your breath. Come to a pause and shake out your hand. Okay, we're gonna lie on our backs for Shavasana. 
So you can use a blanket or pillow for your head, a real blanket or a bolster for under your knees, and you can just kind of lie all the way flat. So an eye pillow or a hoodie or blanket you want to put over your eyes, you can do that. Ah, just letting yourself just sink your body into the earth. into this form, this corpse pose. And we just die to the old ways, die to our old self. Where we close and integrate all that we moved ourselves through through our practice. So we allow our body and our mind to come into for us. And if your mind is needing some support to focus, continue to bring it back to a sensation of your breath. Letting go in your body. You can continue to rest here for as long as you need to today. I'm going to end our practice. And if you would like to slowly move and awaken your body and roll to your side, then you can do that. Slowly bring yourself back into a comfortable seated posture. And we'll close with our hands placed at our heart center in Anjali Mudra. And we'll close with the sound of Om one time We'll send this peaceful, powerful, loving energy that we've cultivated within ourselves during our practice 
we'll send it out to anyone who's in need of it today. Let's take a full cycle of our breath. And let's inhale together. Om. Namaste. Blessings. You can find me on mountainmermaidwellness.com for my live online classes or on YouTube. Like subscribe, all those good things, share the video with someone you think would benefit from it today. Blessings to all of you. Goodbye for now.